Hello everyone. Welcome to the session on communication electronics. In this session, we'll be discussing about modulation index in frequency modulation. In this session, we will understand what we mean by modulation index. We will also see the definition of deviation ratio. We will also see what we mean by frequency deviation or carrier swing. And then finally, we will see the FM band allocation. Friends, as you know that you are viewing this session on my YouTube channel, Learn with Prakash Khanade. And do not forget to subscribe to the channel to see more videos on the subjects of electronics and computer science. We have already seen waveforms for frequency modulation. In frequency modulation, as we know that we apply a modulating signal. This is our audio signal or information signal. This signal is a low frequency signal. And we have a high frequency carrier signal. In FM, you will find that the frequency of the carrier signal is varied in accordance with the amplitude of the modulating signal. Therefore, in FM signal, sometimes you will find that the frequency is increased. Sometimes you will find the frequency is decreased. And this increase or decrease in the frequency of FM signal is directly proportional to the amplitude of modulating signal. In FM, modulation index is a parameter that is used to describe frequency deviation of the carrier. In FM, from the central carrier frequency, it is being found that the carrier frequency will either increase or decrease. This change in the carrier frequency is being called as a frequency deviation. Modulation index is a parameter that is being used to describe such frequency deviation. You can also say that modulation index is a measure of modulation in FM. It is similar to that of AM. In AM also, we have defined the modulation index as the measure of modulation. In FM, modulation index is defined as the ratio of frequency deviation to modulating signal frequency. That is, we write the formula for modulation index in FM as modulation index is equal to in the numerator, we write frequency deviation and in the denominator, we write modulating signal frequency. So here you will find that in the numerator, we have a frequency and in the denominator also we have a frequency. So it is a ratio of frequencies only. In AM already I have told you that the modulation index can be in the range of zero to one, but in FM, it is not necessary that the modulation index should be always in the range of 0 to 1. It is possible that in FM, the value of the modulation index can be even greater than 1. Also, you can observe from this formula that the modulation index is independent of the carrier frequency. The modulation index will depend upon the frequency deviation and the modulating signal frequency, but it will not depend upon the carrier signal frequency. So modulation index in FM is independent of the carrier signal frequency. Say for example, if the frequency deviation at any given point in FM is 15 kilohertz, it can be positive 15 kilohertz as well as it can be negative 15 kilohertz. So it can have either a plus value or minus value. And the modulating signal frequency is five kilohertz then in such a case, the modulation index can be 15 kilohertz divided by 5 kilohertz. So the value of the modulation index in this way, in this case, will be equal to 3. Observe that in FM, frequency deviation and modulating signal frequency continuously changes. And therefore, the modulation index will also continuously change. As shown in this waveform, you will find that the frequency deviation is continuously changing in the FM signal. Also, you will find that it is possible that the modulating signal frequency may also change. So if both 
are changing, then it is possible that the value of the modulation index will not be a fixed one. It will continuously goes on changing in FM. Since the value of the modulating signal frequency or frequency deviation continuously changes, we have observed that the modulation index in FM also may change continuously. And therefore, another parameter is being defined in FM. And this parameter is being called as the deviation ratio. When we go on designing the FM systems, then it is necessary for us to know what is the maximum permissible value for the modulation index. This maximum permissible value of the modulation index is being termed as deviation ratio. So now we can define the deviation ratio. The deviation ratio in FM is defined as the maximum value of frequency deviation to maximum value of modulating signal frequency. That is the deviation ratio in FM is defined as F deviation where we will take the max value or maximum value divided by FAF that is the modulating signal frequency and here also we will consider the maximum value. So you will find that the definition for the deviation ratio is similar to that of modulation index except one change that here in the numerator and denominator both we will consider the maximum permissible values for frequency deviation and modulating signal frequency. So for example, suppose the maximum frequency deviation permitted for the FM broadcast is plus or minus 75 kilohertz. And the maximum modulating signal frequency that is being permitted is 15 kilohertz. Then in such a case, you will find that the deviation ratio will be 75 kilohertz divided by 15 kilohertz, which is equal to 5. This deviation ratio in FM is an important parameter because it will actually decide the number of significant sidebands in FM. In AM, already we know that there are only two sidebands. One is the upper sideband and another is the lower sideband. But in FM, the number of significant, the number of sidebands are infinite theoretically. But practically, we need to consider only the significant sidebands, that is of which the amplitude is sufficiently high. And this number of significant sidebands will depend upon the value of the deviation ratio. Say for example, if the deviation ratio is one, then in that case, the number of significant sidebands are only three. If the value of deviation ratio is two, then the number of significant sidebands are four. If the value of deviation ratio is three, then the number of significant sidebands are six. If the value of deviation ratio is four, then the number of significant sidebands are seven. And the highest value of deviation ratio can be five. And in that case, the number of significant sidebands are eight. And this is the maximum value of significant sidebands in FM. Now we will go for understanding the concept of frequency deviation and carrier swing. In frequency modulation, the frequency deviation is defined as the difference between the modulated frequency and the nominal carrier frequency. The frequency deviation is proportional to the amplitude of modulating signal. The frequency deviation is normally indicated by a parameter delta f. So here you will find that delta f is proportional to vm, where vm is the amplitude of modulating signal. So we can easily observe that frequency deviation is independent of the modulating signal frequency. Frequency deviation does not depend upon the modulating signal frequency. Even if modulating signal frequency is varied, the frequency deviation will not be affected or will not be changed. In case of FM, we can easily compute the maximum frequency. And it can be given as F max is equal to Fc plus delta F. 
where fc is the central carrier frequency and when we add this frequency deviation into the central carrier frequency then that will give us the maximum frequency that can be used in fm and the minimum frequency of the fm signal can be computed by using the formula f min is equal to fc minus delta f that is when we subtract this frequency deviation delta f from the central carrier frequency fc then we will get the minimum frequency of the fm signal so this is the maximum frequency of fm signal and this is the minimum frequency of fm signal now we can define a new term and this is being called as a frequency carrier swing and frequency carrier swing is defined as the total change from minimum to maximum frequency of fm signal and therefore we can say that the frequency carrier swing in fm is equal to twice delta f that is if your delta f that is frequency deviation is 75 kilohertz then in that case the carrier swing will be 150 kilohertz this carrier swing is important to us because whenever we go for the channel spacing the fm channel spacing in that case we will require this value of carrier swing now we will go for the fm band allocation as already i have told you that in case of fm the broadcasting range or the frequency range that is being allocated is from 88 megahertz to 108 megahertz so all the fm stations will have a frequency in the range of 88 megahertz to 108 megahertz as i told you commercially the maximum frequency deviation that is being permitted in india is plus or minus 75 kilohertz and therefore the channel spacing that is being used for the fm radio or fm channel is 200 kilohertz so in this frequency range from 88 megahertz to 108 megahertz you can have many more fm channels you will find that for any fm channel the spacing is about 200 kilohertz so at the center we will have carrier frequency and this carrier frequency can increase or can decrease from the central frequency so if we assume that the frequency deviation is 75 kilohertz then it means that the maximum frequency can be fc plus 75 kilohertz and the minimum frequency for any channel will be fc minus 75 kilohertz therefore the total allocation will be required is 150 kilohertz it means that an additional 50 kilohertz buffer is being left above and below the highest frequency and this is being left so that we can have we can reduce the interaction with the other channels so there will be no interaction between the two fm channels observe that in case of fm only 10 kilohertz spacing is being used between the channels while in fm the spacing of the channel is about 200 kilohertz so it is much more than that of am the reason for low spacing in am is that the frequency range for am is being very limited and it is a low frequency range in fm we go for a higher frequency range and therefore it is possible for us to have a higher channel spacing in fm and that is the reason you will find that the am fm reception is uh, of better quality than that of the am reception so thank you friends for viewing the session hopefully you have understood the concept of modulation index and deviation ratio in fm thank you for viewing the session